Welcome back to part is this eight now. We've got a lot of parts so far in the series and we still have a lot more to go. So what we're going to be doing now is now that you understand events and you understand how to use some of the built in variables, remember those green things, the speed direction, those are built in game maker controls them. They set them, we can read them and set them ourselves. Those are built in variables. So now that we understand those, what we're going to do next is actually create some of our own and start using those to do another kind of movement system. Because the one we set up is fine for certain games where something maybe like Pac-Man or Flappy Bird, something where you are always moving and you can't stop, that's okay. But a lot of games aren't like that. You tell it when to move and you tell it when to stop. And with the system we have right now, that doesn't really work. So what we're going to do is create some of our own variables to control some data and how fast we want to move. And then we're going to set it up so that we only move when we actually want to move. Let's jump in. So I've got the same project open here. And what I'm going to do is just take this project and turn it into what I want it to be. That way, if you're still following along exactly the same, that's fine. If you're just jumping into this video because you wanna know how to get objects moving in Game Maker, that's fine too. You can just start with a fresh project and just follow along with what I'm doing here. So we have our object player and we have a sprite for it and that object is in our room. That's the only prerequisites that we need. So right now we have a create event, but inside of here we don't do anything. Now remember the create event triggers one time when the object is first made, which makes it really handy for initializing, which just means setting up for the first time. It makes it perfect for initializing variables and data that we want our object to have. Things like our name, our movement speed, our health, our inventory. These are things that we want to set up just one time when the object or player or whatever it is gets created and then we can update it later on, but the first time we only want it to run once. Imagine if we had an inventory that we created over and over and over again. It, it, it would either stack, it would throw an error, it would do something weird. We don't want that. So instead, we use the create event to do things once. So if you don't have a create event, click on add event, and it's the very first one, create. Then in create, this is what I'm gonna say. We're gonna make our own variable here. I'm gonna call this, we're gonna call it move speed equals, and we're gonna set it equal to five and put a semicolon here. Now, let's break this down. Move speed is a variable that we have created. And when we create something, GameMaker turns it blue by default. And if we create something that has never been used anywhere else in an object, GameMaker is going to throw up this yellow warning. This is a warning that says, hey, this variable has only been referenced once. If you're in a create event, don't worry about it. That's probably fine. If we're somewhere else and we see that, then we probably have a problem. And I will touch on that in just a little bit. But move speed, the variable name we made, we can call it whatever we want. We could call this zebra stripes and still give it the exact same value and use it the exact same way. But when we do that, it makes it very difficult to actually come in and know what our code is doing by looking at it. And if you're working on a team or asking someone for help and you've got really terribly named variables, uh, you're, you're going to be out of luck. There's just nothing you can do if people cannot read your code and understand what you're trying to do. So I'm going to press Control Z and I'm going to leave this as move speed because it is indicating that this is the value of how fast we're going to be moving. So we create it. We set it equal to one equal sign is assigning the value on the right, which is five to the value on the left, which is our variable. So five is the value, semicolon ends the sentence. Our variable move speed now is being set. Okay, let me read the sentence. Move speed equals five. So the variable move speed now has a value of five. If I come down here and there's a function we can call, we haven't talked about functions yet, but what this does is it shows a message on the screen of what a value is. 
and if I pass in this variable and I run this right now, this is going to show us five. It means that, hey, that actually does have a value of five. It's perfect. Now I'm going to delete that because we don't need to keep it in our game. That's something just for debugging purposes. Debugging means you're figuring out what's wrong with your game through various means. So this is all we need in the create event, move speed. Now let's go into the left. And what we want to do now is instead of setting our speed, we're actually going to directly change the X and Y coordinates of our player. So up until this point, we've only used speed and direction, and we haven't talked about the grid system in GameMaker Studio. So let's go ahead and do that. GameMaker uses a grid. Now, you can probably tell that because, hey, look at that, it's a grid. But it uses kind of a different grid system than maybe what you're used to. Now, if you've done any grid stuff in math, things like putting things on a grid, drawing the lines, connecting dots on a grid, things like that, then you'll have some basic understanding. And if not, don't worry about it, I'm gonna explain it right now. But the Game Maker grid system is different than those. So here is probably what you've seen and maybe understand. You have a grid system that starts in the center at zero, and you have an X and a Y. X goes positive to the right, negative to the left, Y goes positive up and negative down. And so if we wanted to plot points on these grids, well, you can see uh, if we went three, two, we would go over three, we can go up two, or depending on exactly how it works, you can do Y first, it's kind of weird, but normally you do X, Y coordinates. And it's the same thing in Game Maker, except you can imagine that they've taken this and thrown out the other sections. So the top left, top right, and bottom left, imagine those are gone and the Y axis is reversed. So if you're not confused yet, good job. I'm gonna do my best, <laughs> I'm kidding. So let me try and show you what I'm talking about here by drawing this onto the screen. So if we have this in Game Maker, the grid that you can imagine Game Maker has is it actually starts right up here. So this in the corner is zero, zero. So that's X and Y. So we have X and we have Y. Now, going to the right, X gets bigger. So that means if, let's say this is five, six, ooh, I can't draw with a mouse, I am so sorry. But the X coordinate gets bigger as you go to the right. That makes sense. And that means that if we are moving this way, this is still X, but now it's getting smaller as we go. So X goes to the right and positive to the right and negative to the left. That's all the X coordinate. But the thing that they did differently is the Y coordinates. So if you're going up, well, Y starts at zero in the top left corner, which means that going up is actually negative and going down is actually positive. So these are both Y, up and down is Y, but going down is actually positive. So here's five, six, seven, and then this one, four, three, two, and so on. Now, X and Y, you've got, those are the two coordinates for a 2D game engine. That's what we're using here. X is horizontal, Y is vertical, but it starts in the top left corner. The way you can easily see this is if you take your mouse over here uh, and then you look in the bottom left hand corner, right down here, you can see that these numbers are changing and this is zero, zero. I can't believe I actually got it directly on there, that's impressive. Zero, zero is in the top left corner. So our player right here, says they are at 544 by 352. So that's the X coordinate 544 and the Y coordinate 352. The reason I'm talking about this so much is because it is essential to understand where your objects are at in the room. Because what we've been doing so far is setting our speed variable, which is a built-in variable, but this says move two pixels every frame, which there are 60 frames in a second, 
and then we set the direction, and the direction tells it which direction to go. We've only been using the four directions, which are essentially positive x, negative x, negative y, and positive y. And it's really confusing at first when y is flip-flopped from all the grids you've ever done or will ever do in your life, which is why I'm trying to hammer this home. So, 0, 0, top left, going to the right is positive, left is negative, up is negative, y, or down is positive for y, x and y coordinates. The reason we're talking about it is we're going to comment out this direction, so I'm going to comment this, this is no longer going to do anything, and I'm going to come down here, so now what we want to say is x, because we're going to move along the x coordinate going left, equals x, and remember, going left is going lesser, so we're going to subtract from our move speed. And now, in our create event, you can see here that that little yellow flag disappeared. If yours didn't disappear from here, and you see another one over here, that means you've got a typo somewhere. GameMaker variables, the ones that you do and the ones that they have, have to be exact. That means the capitalization, the spaces, everything must match. This variable move speed without a capital S is a different variable than move speed with a capital S. And if I try to run this right now and I click left, the game is going to crash. You're going to get this and it's going to say it's not set before reading it. That means you're trying to do math on a number that game on a value that game maker can't compute because it doesn't know what it is. If I ask you what is five minus x, but I never tell you what x is, you can't do it because you don't know. Same thing here. We have a variable that we have never given a value, and game maker's like, hey, I need a value here. So remember, in the create event, if you see this yellow triangle, it's fine because this is where we are initializing variables, but in events other than create, you should not see this. And if you do, you've got a typo. So make sure and do move speed or whatever you're calling it and have it be exactly the same. If you can't remember or you're not sure how to spell it or you don't like typing or for whatever reason, if you start typing it, it should come up in your autocomplete and you can just click on it and then you'll know that it is exactly the same. So where we're at, when we start is 500, no, 544. And then we come over here and we say this, this X is now gonna be equal to 544 minus five because that's the value we have. So 544 minus five is 539. And when we press left on the keyboard, that's what it's going to do. It's gonna move just five pixels over. Now, if we hold it down, it doesn't do anything because we actually have our event triggering only when we press the key. We can change that and keep our code intact, which is really handy. If we right click on our event over here and we go to change event, we can go down to key down and change it to left. Make sure it's still left because if you change it to something else, you're gonna be moving the incorrect way. Now you can see that the picture here is different. Key down and key press have different pictures on the events. It's so you can easily distinguish them. Now if I press F5 and run this game and I hold the left key down, I move only while I'm doing that. So this is how we move when the key is being held down and we don't move when it isn't. And this is a much more traditional kind of movement scheme. So we need to do this for the other three keys as well. So I'm going to go into right because I'm going to tackle the X coordinate first or the X plane. So I'm going to comment out the direction. And now I'm going to say X equals X. And on the left one, we said minus move speed because remember, we want to go to the left. But in Game Maker, if we want to go to the right, we increase our X. So we're going to say X equals x plus move speed. Now we need to change the event, right click on the event, change to key down right, and if we run this now, I can move right and I can move left. Perfect, that's what we want. 
So let's go to move up. We're gonna comment this out. And now we're gonna say Y. Because Y controls up and down. Y equals where we wherever we are. And then we want to be moving up, which is actually minus. So we're gonna say Y equals Y minus move speed. And we're gonna change this event and key down up. So if I run this now, we should be able to move up, right and left. Now, if you type any of these pluses or minuses wrong, your code is still going to function, it's just that you're going to be going the wrong way. So now if I hold up, I'm actually going down, and that's definitely not what we want. So make sure you've got the pluses and minuses correct. Otherwise, you'll be going in all the wrong directions, but all you have to do is change this right here. Now, let's go over to move down, comment this out. So two slashes comments. I don't think I specifically said that in this video. And now we want to say y equals y plus move speed. Change the event. Mount key down, down. And now we have movement in our game with the variable we created. And we can actually move eight directions now, because if we hold two down, we can actually go diagonal. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these three key press events, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them. So why did we use a variable here when we could have easily just said five? Well, for one, you need to learn how to use your own variables because you can't do much in a game without them. The more practical reason is it's much more efficient to change a variable in one place than have to change it everywhere. So let's say our movement speed feels a little too sluggish and we want to change it to nine. Well, the create event, that's where we initialize our move speed variable and voila, now it is working. But if we had this just as a number everywhere, anytime we wanted to change it, we'd have to go in and change it from five to nine in all of the events. And this is a very simple program, but you can use variables in dozens of events in thousands of lines of code. So if you need to make a change, well, uh, you have to use variables to be able to do what you wanna do. Okay, that's everything we're gonna do today. We created our own variable, we set up our movement speed so that we can control it now and actually move only when we're holding down that key. And we discussed the grid and exactly how that works and how the it's kind of funky in Game Maker, but the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it. So understanding the grid, being able to man manipulate the X and Y coordinates directly is how movement is done in Game Maker for 99% of the games that you will ever make. So this is critical and essential skills to have. I hope that helps. And if you have any questions or you get confused, ask in the comments, find me on Twitter. Remember, you're not alone. You can do this. Just ask help when you need it. So until next time, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.